So welcome to the final session. Um, so this is about getting involved in SGA. Um, I think all of us up here are either serving currently or have served previously um, in SGA either leadership or on committees, things of that nature. Um, and we're going to kind of keep this a little, little informal because we want to be able to answer any questions that you have. Like it, it, knowing what you're committing to is also key here, right? <laughs> um, and trust me, lessons were learned this year. Um, but maybe if we get started, if everyone can introduce themselves and talk about your role, uh, what you do at SGA, if you've held previous positions, because I think most of us have. Um, no? Yeah, you have. Okay. Emily's the first timer. Yes. First timer. Um, and then we can discuss further or open it up to questions however it goes. All right. So I will pass off Muriel. Hi, Muriel Jackson. I've been in SGA since 1993 when I met Susan Potts McDonald and Beth Benson came to my public library because we had an archive. I'd never heard of SGA. And they got me interested, and I talked to my director. He's like, I want you to go. They came to us. It must be a good program. And I've been involved ever since. Um, last year, I received, uh, was made a fellow of SGA, and my director nominated me. And after they read everything that I had been involved in, I told my staff, I said, I'm tired. <laughs> I need to go home because I didn't know I had put that much in. Uh, my first occupation was secretary with Susan Broom, uh, who retired from Mercer was there. I've been archivist, various committees, nomination committee, education committee, scholarship. But you really get to know people just being on those committees. Um, I even a couple of times entertained being president, but I looked at my what I had to do. And this was the days when there was no Zoom or anything. You actually physically drove where all the meetings were. Now you do have the advantages of having the capability of going, going, going on Zoom to do meetings and so forth. Um, and my institution has benefited from my membership in SGA, the various opportunities. You hear about things that you normally wouldn't hear um, broadcast. So you can, you can get a lot out of it and make a lot of lifelong friends. Pam and I were saying, we found a picture from last time SGA met in 2019. It was a picture of her, myself, and another lady who was at the King Center. We were the oldest members there. And so it's a, it's a very good organization. You get your feet wet, you've got the support. And if you came to the previous uh, program that was in here about mentorship and everything else, you do have that support system. So I think you've all heard me enough this week. Um, but I am Allison Duluth. I serve this year as program committee chair. Um, I, I will tell you, this year was a lot of work. Um, more so than, I mean, it's normally a lot of work, but this year was, anyways, I'm not selling this very well. Honesty is key. I have been a member since 2009. Um, I joined when I got my first professional job in the state, which I found out two years later was actually paraprofessional. Um, but I got started because of Courtney Chartier, who ended up serving as president shortly after I got involved. Um, I've served on the scholarship committee. I served as scholarship committee chair. That was kind of my introduction to the board. Um, and I do say, if you are looking for a good low key way to get involved, that is a great place to start. It's a fun job. You get to give away money. Um, you get to meet some really wonderful people. Um, and you get to see actual progress over the course of the year, right? So like with the program committee, we do a lot of work on the front end. And then you have two days of crazy and then you're done, but with the scholarships, you do get to see that kind of ongoing. Um, I've also served as admin assistant. Um, so that was, a, when I did it, it was a two year term with a third year of you being around for questions. Um, and I got that job in the transition time too. Um, <laughs> but that one was a fun one as well. And Kathy and I have been talking about this a lot because we've both served as admin. Um, that was a, an easier role as well now. <clears throat> um, when I took over the job, people were recommending not to do it because it was so much work. But with Wild Apricot now, it's pretty easy. It's pretty streamlined. So another good low-key way to get involved. Um, and you learn a lot about the website and the organization as administrative assistant. Um, 
I've also served in local arrangements. Um, I've never chaired that committee, but I served as um, a committee member for two years in a row when we were in Northeast Georgia because I lived close enough. Um, and I think I was the only one at the time that was that far north um, with a high loss a year. Um, and then someone convinced me to run for a chair. I don't know. I, I won't call her out. Um, but, but yeah, so. Um, this is my most recent one. I will be taking a break next year, but I'm looking forward to becoming more involved going forward again. So I will pass it over to Kathy. And if I could say one thing, you mentioned Courtney. <laughs> when some of the people we talked about here, like Courtney, she went on to become president of Society of American Archivists. So it can be a stepping stone once you've gained your confidence in this organization. And, I'll, and talking about Courtney, um, she has also served in the Academy of Certified Archivists. She's held positions there as well. Um, I can't remember which, but I know she's held at least two. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so this is a good, it's a way to ease into professional service um, without jumping into the national end of the spectrum. Well, I think too that if you're a member of SGA and you apply for a job even outside of Georgia and you show you've been active, this is a very well respected professional organization. When you look and see just how many people from other states are members of this, they can't ever come to anything, but they enjoy what they get out of their membership. Yeah. And we're hopefully fixing that with virtual. <laughs> <laughs> that was the point. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Kathy Miller. I'm currently serving as the president of the Society of Georgia Archivists. If that's news to anyone in this room. <laughs> Welcome to the 2022 annual meeting. Uh, so yeah, um, let's see here, president. Uh, somebody nominated me, uh, so somebody had a vote of confidence in me, and I'll I'll use that comment as kind of my picking off point. Um, it, it's it's that vote of confidence of somebody else's belief in your abilities as a person to take on leadership that propelled me to get involved with the SGA board in any capacity. Back in 2013, 2014 timeframe, the, the years actually scratchy, maybe it was 2013, but I have what I would identify as a mentor, Cheryl H. Driver, an email correspondent say to me, you know, Kathy, I think, I think you should get involved with the SGA board. She's like, I think you'd be really great. So, you know, take a look at the various positions that are available, which I will note you can review all of the positions and the uh, duties and responsibilities associated with them. On our website, um, if you go to About SGA, under that, you'll see a link for Administrative Handbook, and that is the Bible to tell you everything you would like to know about not only the specific board positions, but you know, we've been referencing a lot of committees here, and there's a lot of detailed information about the committees in that Administrative Handbook as well, and you can get an idea of, from reading the Admin Handbook, what work, what the work is that those committees do, because you're saying Local Arrangements Committee can just sound a little obtuse and like what is that um, it's logistics and planning for the annual meeting for like the actual on-site when on-site is happening and for virtual it's been literally just figuring out all the virtual technical issues um so yeah i, I cannot sing the praises of the administrative handbook high enough but um so that was it so i went and i looked at the administrative handbook and i looked at the various positions that were available for an introvert such as myself and i was and I say that, and then I'm going to tell you which position I wanted to opt in for. Um, and then I opted for, oh, assistant outreach manager. That's the one I'll do as an introvert who wants low time investment in management, um, which the low time investment um, and like just getting my toes wet in like leadership capacity absolutely was true for what was then known as the assistant outreach manager role, and which has now evolved into being the outreach committee. Um, and yeah, it's just been an evolution from there. I served as administrative assistant. Um, I served also in a non-board capacity. I've just, I volunteered on many of our committees. And I think if all of you, if you take anything away from this information session, um, dip your toe in there first and foremost, volunteer for one of our committees. One of the ones, you know, in terms of like a topical area that you feel passionate, that you feel, feel passionate about educational opportunities that we're providing to archivists. And like I said in my comments yesterday during the business meeting, the education committee, the program committee, um, the scholarship committee, because we are providing educational opportunities through the scholarships, those are the kind of places for you if that's your kind of topical interest and everything. If you're interested in advocacy, outreach committee is a place for you. GAM, if you're wanting to be able to sing the praises of the work that archives and archivists do, that is the place for you. And I really 
cannot emphasize enough the, 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 the payback that volunteering on SGA committees has gotten me. It was a great way to network with fellow individuals when you're having your committee meetings. And so you're being able to actually talk with other people, be it virtually or in person, um, and just be able to you know, have your name out there and have other people be able to recognize who you are and know what you're doing and then be able to build those relationships from there. Like, oh yeah, Kathy's at AUC. I know they're working on this and I actually have questions related to that. Let me reach out to them. And that whole connection happens from knowledge from SGA. Uh, and then yeah, my current trajectory. Um, so when you're serving as president, you begin, it's a lovely three-year journey where you begin as vice president and then president and then next year, the next year you serve as nominating committee chair, where your responsibility is recruitment for the next year's board. So, um, so if any of you are interested in wanting to get involved on the SGA board for 2024, I'm happy to hit you up next year um, for recruitment purposes. Um, joking aside, um, SGA committees, again, cannot stress them enough. They're a wonderful place to get involved. And uh, yeah, we've, we've tried to continue to be very transparent about the activities of the SGA board. It's why our SGA board meetings are open to all members to be able to attend. And um, as emphasized by Muriel and Allison, um, those board meetings are now held virtually via Zoom, which I think, A, is advantageous for people who do decide they want to get involved on the board, because we did used to meet in person at the Georgia Archives, and that's a, that's a roadblock for people who live in Valdosta or live in Savannah, but basically if you don't live in the metro Atlanta area, because you're having to commute to Morrow, Georgia three times a year for a board meeting. So if the pandemic has given any of anything to us that's been a good gift, it's been having our board meetings turn into being virtual. And I think it's hopefully opened up a lot of opportunities for people who would have otherwise not considered getting involved on the board. Um, I forgot where I was going to also go from that because, um, as I noted, also extemporaneous speaking is not my thing. Uh -huh. uh, but um, yeah, it's. I've been a member since 2011. We've often kind of stating when we joined. So, you know, I'm, I'm a little over a decade in into membership in this organization. And I, truly, I, this is the one thing I said I would not be the archivist I am today if it was not for my involvement with SGA. This is just, there's something magical about this organization and the group of archivists that are a part of it. And we really do have each other's backs. We try to support each other to the best of our abilities. And it's just a really beautiful thing that I really haven't seen replicated in other places. Mind you, I've not lived many other places to be involved with other regional archival organizations. But it's, it's something that I would say selfishly, like, know that you should appreciate it and take advantage of it because um we have something special here so i'm gonna pass the mic i got i got my own mic yay yeah um hey everybody i'm emily hallaby i uh I'm telling you a secret for those of you who don't know me well i'm not actually an archivist uh, i know and i'm on the board uh, so i'm National Accounts Manager of Preserve South, and um, again, some of the older faces here will know I have been, I'm like a long time listener versus my caller. I have been coming to these meetings for 12 years and have loved being involved with SGA from a vendor perspective. Um, and late last year, I got word that somebody nominated me to be scan chair, which if you don't know, it's Georgia Archives Month. Uh, I hope you all know Anne is that and not to be confused with uh, the museum's conference. Uh, anyway, and so I was like, well, you guys love me. Um, and so I, I read a little bit about what it was. I wasn't too familiar with Georgia Archives much at the time um, or what the activities involved were. Um, but it looked like it was going to be a lighter load and I could handle it. Um, and so I agreed to be on it. And to be honest, I love it so much. I agree to be chair again for 2023. Um, it is a wonderful committee. It, all of the activities are around promoting the archives. Um, and we get to solicit photographs from archivists around the state. Depending on what our theme is, we get to come up with our theme. We get to really like, you know, get our creative juices flowing. And uh, we've had a wonderful 
uh, volunteer committee this year who has really taken what could otherwise be a heavy load and we've been able to really divvy it up. Pamela has, uh, she designed our poster. Uh, Kate Daly has been our secretary and has taken all the minutes and been able to post stuff uh, to the website for us. Um, gosh, we have Natora and we have Virginia Blake and we have, uh, who am I forgetting? Brittany Newberry has helped us with uh, social media. Um, and we also get to give away money, which is also really fun. We get to solicit money and then we get to turn around and give that money away. Um, so it's really fun to send an email saying, who won the spotlight grant? We also this year started a new uh, grant, a digitization grant. So in partnership with the Journal Library of Georgia. So we have the ability to like, Come up with new ideas and figure out ways to really help spread the message. And of course, the bottom line of AM is that we have to get the proclamation signed every year from the governor. Um, and we did that this year. Sometimes it's in person, this year it's not. Um, but it's a really, really fun committee. And it's, it, I will say for the past 12 years, I've put this is my first time really being in a professional organization um, that is related to my career. I have put all of my other hours into either my kids' school or I'm an affordable housing advocate. I work um, on addressing issues of people experiencing homelessness. Like I poured so much energy into my community at my home. This is the first time I started pouring energy into my professional career and it's been so rewarding um, and I you know sometimes I feel guilty because I'll do some volunteer work during you know work hours and now I feel like oh I can do volunteer work during work and not feel guilty about it because it's work related <laughs> um, so anyway it's you know when you've got a good team when you've got a lot of volunteers who are helping you can really lighten the load um, we need Obviously, I'm thrilled to see so many young faces in here and new faces in here because we do need new blood. Um, and I think you will find it to be very rewarding. Um, as far as you know, <laughs> so, uh, this is uh, Pamela and I uh, I'm on the committee this year. And as far as flexibility, I just want to reiterate the whole Zoom thing because. Um, Sometimes Emily was joining us in the parking lot of your child. Yeah. What was he playing? Volleyball. Volleyball. So, yeah, you know, so we, you know, not driving. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, there was one where I was driving while I had all the volleyball players in the, in the car. But it was one that I didn't have to be too engaged with. Right. So, the so team was able to manage it. And I was able to, you know, listen or not listen. So it's, yeah, the Zoom is, you've got more yeah. flexible. So yeah, exactly. parking lot of volleyball is pretty Yeah, I thought so. Yeah, but hey, we make it happen. <laughs> Hi everyone, I'm Megan Perkoff. I am the current SGA Communications Director. Um, I joined SGA in 2016 when I was a little student. Um, and I mainly joined because I wanted to go to the Georgia Archives Institute. And thankfully, I got the Carol Hart Scholarship to attend. Um, otherwise, I would not have been able to afford to go because I was in a term position. Um, and so ever since then, I felt like I needed to give back to SGA. Um, not that you need to give away to get a part of it. Um, and so I was just so thankful for that opportunity. And so I first joined the board as a nominated committee member. Um, and I remember seeing the email call out for it and the hours estimated for a month of time that you need um, to commit to it. And I think it was like two hours a month. And I was like, that's easy. Um, and then, you know, I've been booked ever since. Um, next, I joined website manager. Um, I think that's the true introvert position because you're really <laughs> the computer the whole time. Um, and it seems intimidating, but while the cloud is so super easy to use, and um, the great thing about SGA is that you usually sign up as an assistant position first, and so you get to learn, and um, 
attend board meetings. I had no idea what went on at board meetings before I joined the board. So I was able to understand what reports were and all that. Um, and then I became communication director, which I will be next year again. Um, and we're currently looking for an assistant if anyone's interested. It is managing our social media accounts and our blog and um, sending out announcements through the listserv. You've probably seen my name. And if you see me liking your post on Instagram, that's me. <laughs> um, I think a great way to get involved in the board is to find ways where you're not finding enjoyment at work promoting archives to transfer it this way. Mm -hmm. Our institutions, um, social media, or a government archives um, in Savannah. So it's run by a whole separate department. We, you know, send the post sometimes to put out, um, but I have no control of that. So, and there's one thing I'm good at, it's scrolling social media. So <laughs> I know how to use it and I absolutely adore it and probably way too much. Um, so when I learned about the communication part, I thought it was a great medium to not only talk about archives, but to promote it through Instagram and social media and all that stuff. Um, I would say I was also scared to join because I was in Savannah. Um, and I know the first board meeting of the year was, or usually they were all at George Archives. And my first one I had to phone in through Zoom. And I was a little intimidated by that. Because um, I wanted to be there in person, but I also was in a current position, so we couldn't afford to drive up there every three months. Um, but since the pandemic, it's now fully virtual, which is a lot easier to access. Um, but I don't want that to be a barrier if you're in a completely different part of the state, um, as she was talking to the board meeting. Um, So, does anyone have any questions, or is there anything that we didn't talk about that you're interested in? Because I can keep talking about it. Yes, ma'am. Um, so, if we are interested, what are the steps to uh, like join? To join SGA or to join leadership or committees? So, uh, to join a leadership. Or okay. Um, so just in case I get through the Zoom. Um, so the question is, how you how do you get involved? What are the steps? Um, we do a call, and you'll actually see an email from me in the next, from the program committee email address. Actually, it'll take a while there, April Cup. But um, you'll see an email coming soon, um, A, with an annual evaluation survey, because we want to know what you thought about the conference. We want to know how we're doing as an organization, um, how education committee, and Mike's not here, but how the um, workshops have gone this year. In that, I will also include a link um, that Christina, who is our current membership chair, um, has created to sign up for committees. So if you want to volunteer as a committee member, that's a great place to look. Um, those are virtual. I remember the days of like, there would be sign up sheets at the annual meeting. That was the only time you could really sign up for committees. So it's all virtual now. It's a, I think it's a Google form, super easy. Um, they'll have the committees listed there. Kathy mentioned the handbook that is on SGA's website. So double check to see if you have questions about what the committees do. Um, and that's a good place to check. Now, when it comes, if you want to run for leadership, so we have two versions of that. There's appointed positions and elected positions. I think you should probably talk about this more than me. Um, but usually there's a call for the nominated committee. Um, it'll come through your email again through the, through the listserv asking for folks to either nominate uh, those who you think would be good at the job, or if you're interested, you can always self-nominate. Um, do you want to talk about the work? Yeah. yeah. So um, it's speaking toward yeah. So for elected, uh, again, it's the same process. We put out a call for nominations. That call for nominations. Uh, so all of you, if you are an SGA member, thank you. Um, if you're not, please consider joining. Um, but for those of you who are, are SGA members, depending on when you join, you saw an email about the ballot, the election ballot coming out a couple of weeks ago or so. So we do have, we have elections in the kind of two, three week time period leading up to the annual meeting. Um, and so that call for nominations for both elected positions and appointed positions, usually will come out in the uh, September timeframe. So, Technically speaking, the call has happened and it's passed. However, we do still have several positions, um, both elected and appointed, um, that are still open. Um, off the top of my head, 
well, Mike actually volunteered to be assistant education again. But if anyone's interested in education, I'm gonna put it out there. Assistant education committee chair is an appointed position, but an, an appointed, you don't have to worry about somebody voting for you. Like you're in like Flynn basically, um, as long as, because basically like first person to express interest, you got it. Like we're not gonna make you compete for an appointed position. Um, so there's assistant education committee chair. There is um, administrative assistant oh, still open. And there's one other that escapes me at the time. I will actually be advertising this via an email. So keep your eyes peeled. Um, and then in terms of elected, um, the positions that are still open that need to be filled are uh, assistant treasurer. Um, you know, Megan made a great point about that we have these assistant roles. And for some of our positions, that assistant role is key so that you don't feel like you're getting thrown into the deep end without knowing what to do because a lot of well, another thing Megan referenced the reports the board reports business meeting reports all of these things where you're like I don't know how this how this like what do you mean I have to do a board report every quarter what um and like we as a board and I say this specifically with myself as being president this year needs to to be better about especially you know newer newer people deciding to get involved on the board us old guard need to be better about communicating out those those processes because they can seem a, a bit obtuse and like well i don't i don't understand what you mean like we we people who have been uploading board reports for the last five years are like yeah you upload the board report like, it's easy like do it and then uh, new new members are like oh how do i how do i actually do that um so that's a whole side note um but for like the positions we have assistant treasurer that's what I, I segue a lot, y'all, and go down pathways. It's bad, it's really bad. Um, assistant roles are key, especially with something like treasurer, who is the person who deals with our money. So we've built in an assistant treasurer position, which is still open um, and that we are looking for candidates for. Um, it's not an easy position to recruit for because we're archivists and we don't want to deal with money. Like, no, that's, that's gross. But that is the whole reason why we created this assistant position and I just said, Dealing with money was gross on a Zoom recording. I just realized that. Oh well, so be it. Um, this is why we have an assistant position, is because you can learn the ropes of what it's going to take to manage our. So we, we use QuickBooks as an accounting software. You can get all of that training in that year of assistantship, and then you'll be able to go into the treasurer role feeling comfortable about knowing that you're managing the organization's finances. In the, Josh is Josh is not trained as a as an accountant. He's he's a trained archivist, and he has done an amazing do, job as treasurer. And it's it's all about us as a board making sure that we're building an appropriate documentation and passing down that knowledge to the incoming board member. So all of that spiel about assistant treasurer. The other two open elected positions that, if you have any interest, are going to be assistant program chair uh, and assistant local arrangements chair. Um, and so that would need to, and, and again, those, it's key. You come in as assistants, you get to see the ropes of how annual meeting programming planning happens. You get to see the ropes of how uh, the logistics around how you actually plan for if we're having an in-person meeting, what is everything that gets involved with that? And then so when you step in as the actual local arrangements chair or the actual program committee chair, again, you feel comfortable about being able to, to jump in. Um, so I hope that speaks fully to your question. And I'll add a couple more notes too. So let's say that you want to, you're interested in several committees. You are more than welcome to sign up for multiple committees. Um, in fact, Virginia Blake has served on both the EM committee and the outreach committee. Um, and you know, I mean, serving as a committee member and not in a leadership role is also pretty light load unless you, you know, decide to take on some leadership within the committee. Uh, like secretary or, or uh, what have you. So um, I would encourage you if you have an interest to sign up for multiple committees. Also, when you do, if you do take a leadership role, what's great is that during the last quarter of the previous chair's uh, tenure, you have some time to pick their brain. You'll get loaded up with the Google Drive that has all of the documentation so you're not having to create things from scratch necessarily, which is really, really helpful. I mean, I can't tell you how many times I was like, wonder if this exists. And like asking people, did this, does this thing exist? And then I looked in the Google Drive and I'm like, oh, there it is. <laughs> but 
So you're not going to be left with a lurch. Uh, you'll have some time to get the download from the previous chair. You'll have the materials all set aside. If the previous chair was organized, it should be like, you know, in the folders of the year it was. So it's, it's all pretty um, seamless when it comes to the transition. Oh, yeah. So what happens if you make an, an assistant committee position and then decide you don't want to do the full position? Then we re-elect you. <laughs> we start from scratch. Um, I mean, most of us, I should I for the vast majority of us, we're very mindful of people stepping into that role fresh. Um, we've had a couple of people who have had to step back this year for various reasons. And so the assistant has six months of training and suddenly they're at the chair or um, responsible for all of these things. But I, I know for me, um, as I rotate off the program chair, I plan to join a committee next year. So when Leah steps up, um, I will be there to answer questions. Um, we kind of do the same thing with administrative assistants. So I think technically that's a two year term, but that <laughs> third year it's understood that you're available in case something breaks or somebody has a question. Um, you know, in terms of a profession, we're we're a helping profession anyways. Um, so if we do have somebody who has to step back or can't service full, we have to just toss them in, in that role um, last minute. There are enough people around who have some sort of historical knowledge that they can kind of guide and help through. So I'll just add though, and I guess I'll stay for the friend. The question was about, I mean, I think specifically if you're in the assistant role and you're like, oh, you know, yeah, I'm not gonna go into this actual chair role. Um, that was the question. Thank you, Sam. Um, so I will say, um, one, in any email I sent to an individual that I was trying to recruit for the board in the past few months. I use the line, if you are in a place professionally and personally where you can take on a leadership opportunity, there's that, it's really, 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 we have our work life and then we have our personal life and there is a lot going on in our personal lives. And so I cannot stress enough that while I would love for all of you to want to get involved on the SGA board, you're just not in a place because work is overwhelming and your personal life is overwhelming. This is this is a 100% volunteer run board. None of us are compensated in any way. Um, all of the money that SGA has, it, it goes to then benefit SGA members through scholarships, through the educational workshops that we hold through this annual meeting. Um, and that's that's so you're taking on a commitment and you have to you have to see that you have the time for that. So I 100% respect when you jump. So if you're in that position where as an assistant, you came into this. We actually just experienced this year with the communications director. We had an individual who, at the start of this year, they were in an excellent place where they could come in and, and decide to take on the assistant communications director role and with the knowledge that they would then become communications director next year. And then craziness happened at their work. Um, I, I know this individual, they're lovely, they're awesome, and they are a committed individual. I know that they would not have go they would not ghost anyone on purpose it's just work became overwhelming for this individual they did need to pull back and you know in situations like that thankfully in this situation we have megan kindly offering to stay on again for a new year as communications director so then we can now recruit for a new assistant communications director if that doesn't happen and we do have that situation of assistant saying like listen i just think got crazy at work things got crazy with family then we as an organization, we pivot. We try and find someone else who can come in in that assistant role and try and cover things. Um, or, you know, we just, not, not to be flipped, but we, we figure it out. <laughs> we figure out some way to be able to make things work. Um, and depending on the role, um, you know, again, like we've really stressed here, some of these are really kind of low key, very much kind of the operational background side of making SGA work. And those are things that thankfully, um, one of us can maybe decide to do just in the background as like an additional thing um, to maybe some other role that we're already doing on the board because, you know, Katrina did say yesterday we need to learn how to say no, but um, so I probably shouldn't advocate that. I'm not advocating that. Do not, do not take on two responsibilities on a board. That's a horrible idea. It's now recorded. It's official. I made that statement. 
I will add before we had another assistant communications director, he can really understand the entirety of the position and that it's mainly social media focused. Um, so I would definitely reiterate to go to the admin handbook on the website so you can see the details of what all the um, board position um, entails. So, you know, there may have been some things I didn't mention up here, but if you go and read, you'll see you're charged with the Gmail account and you're charged with the blog and making sure it's paid for and things like that. Um, so that way you're not too intimidated when you go in as assistant and you know all that you're um, going to sign up for. Other questions or things that we may have missed. What was your favorite thing about the position that you had within your whole morning experience? Wow. Um, I recently went to a presentation for Georgia uh, Library Association and that has been for me because I see more of the public libraries who are maintaining archives and encouraging their members to become more active with the local collections. And I saw someone, we had been on uh, Georgia Archives Month when it was actually Georgia Archives Week. We would come together and sit and fold posters and stuff envelopes. So I think you could say SGA has come a long way. <laughs> Uh, I, I enjoy the fact that we're, we're not standing still on our laurels. I've seen it come up and you see where new ideas are, are, are approached. And I guess you could say we're a very liberal group and tossing around the ideas and trying to try things out that may not work. But you can't say we didn't try. So I think the thing I love about this organization is that you can come in with something to try to help improve it. And you're greeted with open arms and they help them work and work with you. Um, I just say the friendships and things that I've made have helped sustain me and the ideas I think of doing things with the group. I would agree with that. Um, I've made a lot of great friends over the years. I a lot of professional contacts. So, you know, if I need if there's something specific I'm looking for or I know what kind of projects are going on and I have questions or want to try something, I know who to talk to. Um, in terms of leadership, I'm honestly, this has been probably the most rewarding experience to date um, because it's the most public thing that we've done, right? So giving out scholarships is wonderful and seeing the effect, but pulling this off as much work as it has been has been fantastic. So um, again, I hope everyone has enjoyed the conference. I'm pretty proud of it. I think we did a fantastic job for committing and everyone. So, um, it's been again a learning experience, but it's been very rewarding. Yeah, so I guess as president, you have to say that's your most rewarding role. But in all truthfulness, yeah, this this three-year trajectory of, of being vice president, which when you're vice president, you're a membership committee chair, um, and, and then becoming president, and then next year I'm going to be able to be nominating committee chair in it. It truly has been the most rewarding three-year experience. I just, and, and, and most importantly, for just getting to engage with all of my fellow board members, I just cannot express how much I love every single one of them and just stress the, the effort that all of them have put into, again, this 100% volunteer commitment and the fact that they've, they've stood up and they've found the time with their professional lives still going on and their personal lives still going on. As Emily noted, since this is professional related work, you can accomplish a lot of your SGA related tasks at work, obviously being able to balance, hopefully your work is a place supportive of your professional service. I would like to think for the most part, most organizations will be. Um, yeah, I, don't, I don't know that I can put into words what it is, it, other than what I just said, it, if I found what's been most rewarding for me as an archivist is seeing is my engagements with other people. And so as president, that's what it's been. It's been my engagements that I've been able to have with Emily and with Megan and with Allison and Muriel and all of the other board members and getting to getting to see all of the amazing work that they did that I can't take credit for at all as president. Um, 
but to know that I was able to be a part of it and to help in some way maybe steer that ship has definitely been the thing for me. Um, I will I will say that it's not just lip service that if you come with new ideas, uh, they will be received because it, I have presented a couple new ideas and they have been accepted with open arms and like for their follow-up meetings. Uh, but for me personally, uh, as a leader on this committee, um, the, one of the more rewarding things was actually having a team working with me that actually like raised their hand to do things. Mm -hmm. And I can't tell you how many other times it's like people have to be volunteer to take on projects within an organization. And this time it was like, y'all are really helping. This is great. You know, so I, I just enjoyed that aspect of it so, so much. Um, and then, of course, the creative aspect of this particular position, too, it was really fun seeing our idea come to light, brainstorming ideas, um, visualizing then those ideas. Um, so if you are inclined to um, want to be more creative in some facet of your life, I would suggest doing it. Yeah. <laughs> um, so for me, when I wanted to talk about each position I was in that was rewarding for me. In the nominating committee, I really learned what all SGA positions are out there um, and how it can work and function. And then on the website manager, I got to do the kind of like redesign because of our new logo that we got a couple years ago. And that was really fun because it was um, so <laughs> no offense. Um, but uh, that was a lot of fun to kind of like use the new color scheme that we got and kind of implement that. Um, and then now as communications director, I um, solicit social media posts from the listserv and um, from other institutions across the state. And sometimes I'll just go on to DLG to find some posts from other institutions. And I love that I'm able to learn about these institutions. And I feel like on my regular social media, I'm not able to follow all of them. So when I'm on SGA social media, I can see what everyone's up to and all their events, and it's really fun learning about all the different organizations that are part of our organization. And yeah, I found that a lot of learning, and of course, making friends is always the best. So, I also want to say, um, because I don't think Megan mentioned this, she's also communications director, is also responsible for putting together our annual magazine. And and Megan did a beautiful job with this year. So if you haven't looked at it, go look at it on our website. It's it's an amazing fun project. She has to solicit all the articles for it. I'll let you speak more about it, Megan. Yeah. I just I like to celebrate, celebrate my people, and she did amazing work. That happened in January and February, so I kind of like blocked it out of my But we use this uh, website called Canva. Some of you might know it's a free resource where you can create graphic designs, and that's also a really fun part of this position um, because. It's like a creative way to get out different ideas. So that's where we put um, make our promotion posts for like the annual meeting and we solicited the president's award and all that kind of stuff. So we make that on there. And then we also make magazines, um, which thankfully we had a lot of great submissions. So if you ever want to submit next year, feel free. But um, in it, we um, list professional opportunities for conferences. We have an update from the DLG, and we got a Washington Beat update, so you can learn what's going on in Washington and the laws that are relevant to archives. Um, and we feature other articles like um, processing projects and other events and such like that. Um, and it's a lot of fun. It is a lot of work at the beginning of your position, um, but um, if you like doing like a little graphic design, it's really easy. Like you would have just searched for like a light bulb and it would pop up and you just put it on. <laughs> Um, yeah, that's a great part of the job. Okay, we have a couple minutes left. Anything else? Any final words? Your exit ticket is to sign up. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, no, please do consider getting involved. It is so much fun. Um, and, and it's easy. Again, there are low key ways to get involved. So if you just want to dip your toes in, 
consider one of the committees, just being a member of a committee, um, look at what they do, consider the workload, because this way to talk about how much how much goes into program committee, which is a little more time consuming than some of our other committees. Um, it was still, yeah, it was a blast. Um, my, my, there were five of us on that committee, um, four, yeah, five. Um, they were a great team and someone was talking about having wonderful volunteers. I, every time we would start talking about somebody, something, someone would say, well, you have too much, what can I do? How can I help you? What, what do you need me to do for this, this aspect? So, um, that part is definitely fun um, and a good, easy way to just test the waters. I would say it's also a good way to impress your supervisor or boss. Um, my library director, who's been retired now for about five years, he was talking about something at UGA and he's trying to figure out who to get in touch with. And I was like, oh, I'll call Cody. He's head of the library. Was, you know him? It's like, yeah, we work on a committee together. And so, I mean, they're impressed that you know people that are higher up than they are, perhaps. Um, and like I said, it's also great on your resume because a lot of jobs really require you to show that you are out and dipping your feet in your profession and you treasure your profession. And so, you know, I can't wait till SGA and GLC come together and have the conference together because there are a lot of people who are in Georgia Library Association who I try to encourage to think about SGA. They're working right on the cusp and they're trying to decide which one they want to do. But I also would like to say that I think the scholarships are a good way to show that SJ has not forgotten its history and honors those who come before and who made the path. And so you can get a lot out of that that way. So um, I think we've pretty much covered all the possible stumbling blocks or excuses that you could throw <laughs> up by saying we got scholarship for that. Yep. We got you can be a member of the committee before you tackle anything. And when I first came, we did not have the three-year vice president. President, president, I think it was President Emeritus. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so, I mean, like I said, it had developed to make, they've seen the issues that came with the position and filled it and worked with it to make it easier. Yep. And the Google Drive is a big part of that too. I remember the days of like passing off flash drives. Um, and that was, and, and that was even, I can't even imagine what those flash drives. In fact, when I was a scholarship community chair, I had to go to the January meeting just to pick up the flash drive which had all of my instructions. Um, so we do have a pretty good track record of keeping up with, you know, what the position responsibilities are. Um, there's actually a timeline that we use every year for the program committee. So some of that's already set. We try to make it as easy as possible for you to get involved. Um, so yeah. Anything? It's 1220, so that is it. Thank you guys so much for coming. Yeah.